Greetings and salutations, Life and Poetry fam. Welcome back to the channel for another video. Guys, if you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Come on in and join the Life and Poetry fam, guys. We are always, always welcoming new family members, guys. We enjoy getting new family members and meeting new people, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, push the button. Come on, you got it, you got it. Push the button. It's right there. Come on, push it. Don't just watch the video. Join the family, guys. It's a lot of great content here. I'm doing my best to get it out in, in, a, in a good way, guys. Um, also, share these videos, like these videos, and comment on these videos, guys. Let's make this happen for the life in poetry, fam, and team. I wanted to talk, guys, about some stuff. I'm sitting here at my, my, my keyboard, getting some practice time in, and I was like, I was reflecting on some stuff, right? And it it's it, it's amazing to me that it took this COVID-19 um, pandemic to get me to slow down and start to evaluate a lot of things that I've been through, that I'm dealing with, that I'm continually going through. And, you know, on, on this, this quarantine period, I've had time to actually sit back and, and truly assess it and things, you know. And I was like, man, I've been through so much stuff in my 27 years on this earth, guys. This this year, July, July 1st, we'll make 28, guys. I'm birthday, July 1st, 28. I'm pushing 30, guys. Um, I've been through so much stuff and I've yet had time to actually sit back and actually evaluate it, you know, and to put things into perspective. And over these past couple of weeks, I've been doing just that. I've been having the opportunity to think clearly, you know, to get all the clutter and chaos and confusion out of my head. You know, uh, I went through a phase where I would compartmentalize the negativity and and just push it back and not deal with it, not one bit. Um, but now that I'm, I'm looking back at it and I'm thinking to myself, was it a good thing to put that stuff in a box and just leave it there for it to just pile up and blow up, you know, one day. And I've come to terms to realize that no, it was not a good idea. Um, I've had many breakdowns, many bad days, uh, days where I didn't even want to be around nobody, just, just sit myself and sulk in my sorrow. But it's not healthy. You know, it's not healthy, not one bit. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, it's... It's crazy though. I've been through so much, guys. So much. If if I if I would make a video on the things I've been through, um, in in my the seven years I have in my twenties, or the, or eight years, the twenty this year that I've had in my twenties, that it would take more than an hour to to divulge all 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 of that, you know. But I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna break it down in like a synopsis best I can for this video. I don't want to make this video too long and drawn out. <clears throat> I want to get straight to the point, you know. Um, but yeah, so gotta stay hydrated, guys. Gotta stay hydrated no matter what. But yeah, so I, I was sitting back and it was just one thing I had to I, I had to go back into. And uh, if you guys are on Facebook, you know Facebook gives you the. Uh, the uh it, it gives you the the memories you know it, it saves it creates memories for your facebook different posts things you create and the other day i made a post and it stopped me dead in my tracks it literally stopped me in my tracks um i i, I saw this post and i had created this i it said that I, I wrote this post and i believe it said 2012. um and for me 2012 was a hard year of transition for me um, uh, leading up to 2012, um, I had just enrolled into college, Bowie State University in 2011, after taking a year off after I graduated from high school, just trying to figure out where, where my fit was. You know, I it, it's a lot when it came to that decision making. But in 2011, um, my dad had passed away. My father had passed away. And if you knew me, 
or if you know me, you know that me and my father were like this. You know, you saw him, you saw me, you saw me, you saw him. You know, I was always at his hip from when I was a, a child, I was at his hip. I couldn't do nothing without him at my side and vice versa. I wouldn't allow him to do nothing without me at his side. Um, so I tried to pit myself in every place he was at, the places that I could go to, some places I shouldn't have been in, but you know, hey, it is what it is, right? But 2012, I had to transition from him from him passing. He passed in October. So I had to transition from him. Now, mind you, I'm just I'm just getting into school. 2011, I'm, I'm a freshman in college, and and then this happens. Um, in 2011, I, I get in, when I get in school uh, early, but I think what 2011 school started then in August or something like that. Uh, right, August, September, something like that, and um, and my dad he was getting sick up until then, but in October, he he had passed away, and I'm I'm in school, um, and I'm thinking to myself while while he's sick before he passed in the school, thinking okay, let me get through these classes, let me get home so I can be with him, you know, because he he didn't want to go to a hospital, he was not a hospital person, he wanted to go peacefully in his home, so we respected it, we respected that, and we allowed it to happen. But so I'm, I'm in these classes and and all of my friends know that I'm going through these things here. So they're checking on me, making sure I'm okay, what I need and things like that. You know, and I'm keeping it cool. I got to stay calm. You know, I got to keep it strong for myself and for my, for my family and things. And, um, and then it happens, right? So after his funeral, funerals, he had two funerals. He was a, a he was a retired army. So he had two funerals, um, a family funeral service for the, his family and friends, the big funeral service. We had the military funeral service for him separate. And after that, that the, after those services, I um, I had to sit back for a little bit. I had to collect myself. And uh, after like a couple of days of me collecting myself, um, I emailed all of my professors and I was like, look, I'm taking a week off of, uh, off of classes. Uh, and they all knew why I was taking this week off. I explained to them everything that was going on and they were they were fine with it and, and all these things there. Um, but it hit me so hard that I was like, man, I don't have my go-to guy that says, look, it's gonna be all right. Um, I don't have this person that's gonna say, look, I got you. Let me show you how to get this done. You know, if I need something, he was there to get it. No matter if he had the, the means to get it done or not, he made sure it got done. Um, but it, it hit me and I was like, he really gone, you know, and not going to lie. I was a little bit selfish at the time. I was like, you got the audacity to leave me like this. Like you, how, how can you do that? You know? Um, yeah, it, it was self, it was selfish. Um, and I can admit it. I, I, hi, my name is Marcus and I was selfish in that aspect because I did not want him to go. Not like that. He had a lot of more life ahead of him to live, you know, in my perspective, he did. Um, you know, but God had other plans for him and, and I had to come to terms with that. But I, I took that and I put that in a box, not in negativity, but beside it. And I compartmentalized that too um, for the duration of that year and 2012. And I just started spouting things out, just, just things that made no sense, but it made me feel good. It made me feel great about about me, you know, trying to push through. It was it was my way of putting a mask on so that you couldn't see the fear I had of living without him in this world. And mind you, I was I was a, a full adult when he passed away. Um, but I was always I'm always gonna be the baby of the family. I'm the youngest of my siblings. I think it's six of us, I think. You lose track after three sometimes. Right? So all that's going on in my head and I'm like you know what let me just shut down and regroup so I literally did that I shut down um I'm I'm, I'm back in school and stuff um after that week in October I'm back in school and and then we go on break and I'm like okay after this break I may not go back I might just take the rest of the semester off or whatever um but what is like Thanksgiving break but it's not really a break in college you can take that day off or something like that it's whatever, you be back in school the next day, you know, um, but, uh, so I, I took some time off, and I was like, I might not go back, but I was like, that, my head was like, dad was like, yo, go back to school, you gotta get back to class, you gotta, you know, get back on the track, so I go back, and, you know, December rolls around, and we go on, on winter break, or whatever, and it happens again, 
it really happens again. And I'm like, man, like it's Christmas time. This is the time where you and I go pick out this tree and we pick the dumbest tree ever. It's always the biggest tree that don't ever fit in our house. We got to recut it when we get home type thing. We always pick out one of them trees. We, we don't measure. We just say, look, we want that tree. It's the biggest tree. It's the most foolish tree. Let's get it, you know. And this time, it, it, he wasn't there. It, it was me and my brother. <clears throat> I'm not taking nothing from it, from, from it, but it was like, this isn't how this is. This is not how my year is supposed to end like this. I'm in school. I'm, my classes are paid for. I got my books, everything I got. I'm, I'm pushing forward. I'm passing my classes. Um, but if you know me, you know, I do not like school. Not one bit, right? Another video, another story for another day. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm in there and I'm like, yo, I, I, my mindset is starting to get, get, you know, boggled down again with a lot of things and, and all these things are happening and things are changing, you know, and even in, in that time and that period and that space, I had to step back and, and assess myself individually outside of the family, you know, because for too long, I was putting myself in, in, in the shoes of the protector when my father passed. Now, and I'm not the oldest sibling. My brother um, is the oldest. I have a, a brother and sister who are the same age, same year type thing. It's all right. You get it, right? <laughs> um, but at the time, my, my brother was the oldest. And he was like, you know, he had his breakdowns too. So I was like, okay, I'm going to let him deal with his stuff on that side. I'm going to deal with this here. I'm going to make sure everything stays intact. No. No, guys, guys, it was a, a big mistake on my part. I could not handle all of it at the, at that time. So I completely shut down. And I just thought, you know what? It's going to be what's going to be. I'm going to live life and I'm going to have fun. I'm not worried about nothing. It's going to be all right. I'm going to become the yes man. You need it? Yeah, I got it. You, you want this? Okay, you have it. I don't, I, I'm not, don't you know, I'm getting it back. Just going to go for it. You know, and it tore me down completely, guys. It really tore me down. Um, and it, it's funny that that post popped up. Um, uh, this year, you know, because I, uh, you know, after everything I've been through, it's it's starting to come back full circle. You know, I'm starting to become that same person again. Where I'm starting to compartmentalize things and, and hide things and hold on to a lot of things when I know for a fact that it's not healthy, not one bit. I feel like I got to sneeze so bad, guys. If I sneeze, please forgive me. Um, I don't got that wrong. I got allergies. It's going to come. Uh, yeah, dealt with that, right? It's gonna come out again. I'm quite certain, right? But so all this is starting to happen again. This is tw this is 2020, and it's happening again. We're just in April. We are just in April of 2020. Yet, yeah, and it so happens that the, this um, this quarantine made me stay still enough to sit back and think, and just to, to break down these layers and and peel back these layers and, and tap and chisel away at these walls, you know? Because I, I don't when I put up walls, I don't put up sheetrock. You know, you can punch through sheetrock and drywall. I put up bricks, bricks. You, you're not gonna break those down unless you like literally take a sledgehammer and, 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 and dismantle them brick by brick. You know, so that's what I started to do. I had to start to sit back, you know, these past couple of weeks and, and to break down some of those layers and to go back and even to forgive certain people for certain things and even to forgive myself for certain things, you know, because um, all too often we blame ourselves I'm going to speak for myself all too often. I blame myself for a lot of things that's happened um, that I had absolutely no control over. You know, um, I blame myself for feeling a certain way. I blame myself for um, having that emotion come out or for 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 um, breaking down or for um, sheltering myself and, and climbing up, you know, when in fact, that's really how I was raised. You know, we weren't raised to show emotion. Um, and that's a downfall for um, for a lot of people in our in, a, in the African American culture. I'm not gonna lie, we have that we have that problem within our families. You know, what happens in this house stays in this house. No, that's the dumbest thing ever. It's stupid. It's stupid. You need help, go get help. You know, and I'm realizing that now that okay, maybe it is time for me to sit back and and reach out to maybe a counselor or or something. I say, look. Or um, when I go to counselor, what's the people that you sit and talk to on the couch? You know, a therapist or something. You know, I think they call them counselors now. Um, but yeah, it's, maybe it's time for me to sit back and and maybe make that appointment and sit with, with, with somebody and actually have that conversation because it's a lot in me that's bottled up that I'm so afraid that's going to come out and it's going to hurt somebody or it's going to hurt me, right? I'm more concerned about hurting somebody else with this than hurting myself because... Um, 
when I bring you into my life, into my circle, you have that space. Unless I unless I evict you, you have that space, you know. And I, I I never want to put my burden on anybody. That's not your responsibility to take on on my struggle on my burden, you know. Um, and it it's a lot that that just piles on, you know, from from my dad passing to me finding out that I was sick and and, and um, 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 after he passed, it it was a lot that happened, you know, in the in the chain of succession that was like, you know what. Let me just put this in a box, put it on a shelf, and I deal with it when it's time to deal with it. Until then, it's there, it's marked um, miscellaneous. I'm gonna push it to the back of the closet and let it collect dust. Guys, it's still back there. I, I had to open it up in this quarantine thing because I was forced to sit still. I was forced to sit there and say, you know what? Look here, Marcus. Look at yourself in this mirror and tell me what you see. And I can honestly tell you guys, what I saw was it myself. I saw pieces of myself in this mirror that were just unnoticeable, unnoticeable. Yeah, I, when you see me, you say you may see Marcus or, or Marcus T, <laughs> this guy, <laughs> had to throw that in there. But when I see myself, I don't always see that. Sometimes I see a person who was just broken down, beaten down and just just unworthy of a lot of things, you know. Um, sometimes I look at myself and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm abnormal, you know. Um, I, I have a, 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 a deficiency in my body. Um, my, my legs don't work. I, it's the song. My legs don't work like it used to before. Ed Sheridan. Yeah, I must have, yeah. You know, what I'm saying thinking out loud. Yeah, but they don't. They don't work like they used to before. Uh, but in, at, at the same time, when I thought about all those things, I had to stop myself. And I was like, you know what? You sound real stupid right now. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself like that. You got to be real and honest with yourself or you're going to walk around looking stupid most of your life. That's my ideology. It may not be yours, but that's my ideology. Excuse me, guys. But you're going to walk around looking stupid for most of your life if you don't be honest with yourself first. So I was like, okay, maybe... There is something in me that is abnormal, but that's okay. See, because if I was normal, I'd be like everybody else out there in the streets. And I don't want to be like them. I want to be like myself. I have to have my own identity in my walk in this life, right? And when it comes to my legs being disrespectful and not wanting to cooperate with the rest of my body, it's okay because they still have some function. I'm still up. I'm still moving about. I still have breath in my body and life I'm living you know, so for me to, to label myself as being abnormal or say that I'm not normal or I, I have this, I have a defect or, or I have a disability. No, I, I, I had, I, I'm looking at it now. I'm putting, I'm putting off those labels piece by piece. If you know me in person, you know that I may be the strongest person you'll come across when it comes mentally. I, I, I can process um, like, at, like, a, like light speed. I, I can do that. I, I can break it down in my head before a conversation is over with. Um, I may not project it, but that's just me as a person. I'm going I'm to make sure I play it out of my head, but it may not always play out to you if we're having that conversation. And maybe that's not healthy either, but I'm working on that too. You know, um, but yeah, I, I had to go back and, and reflect on those things like, okay, yeah, these things happen. Yeah, my, my dad passed away, but that's life. You know, he, he wasn't going to be here with me forever, no matter how long I wanted him. We always want our parents to be with us for a lifetime. Um, in reality, they are. They're always in our hearts and our spirits and our thoughts and in our memories, right? But in actuality, they can't be. They can't be. They cannot physically be here with us for the rest of our natural born lives. It's just impossible. It's impossible. They don't have immortality. They don't have immortality. They're humans. They're humans, right? Uh, so I had, I had, I, I, I'm, I'm breaking that down still today. He passed in 2011. It's 2020. Yeah, I deal with it so often, too often, actually, I think. But it's all right. I'm working through it. It takes time to get over certain things, you know. Um, I'm, I'm processing me, um, uh, having to take these trips to the hospital and finding out that I was sick, um, uh, having to take all this medication to combat my sickness. I'm processing the fact that I'm on this walker. Um, I'm processing the fact that my legs at the moment, at the moment, 
may not work um, in full capacity, but it's okay. I'm still here today. I'm still before you. I'm I'm still able to speak to you. I'm still able to give you my input, my opinion. Man, my shirt is wrinkled. Wow, that really just caught me. I don't care. It's all right. I'm in the house. Quarant quarantine wrinkles. All right, but I'm still processing all those things, and it's okay. It's okay for me to do it because if I don't, it will break me down, and I will be no good for for my my fiance who I'm about to marry in August. I won't. I wouldn't be no good for, for the the children that uh, we want to bear. Um, and then God so fit to show us that we're going to be blessed with, you know, it's and that's another amazing thing. You know, um, I wouldn't be fit to to, um, to to run my uh, my production company that I'm, I'm trying to, to get in, in the works. I, I, I just wouldn't be able to do none of those things if I leave myself from this space of contempt in this box of compartmentalization. I just couldn't do it. I cannot allow myself to be that person to do it. I just cannot do it, guys. Um, but yeah, so this quarantine thing really has been a blessing to me. Um, I know that people are getting sick and I'm again, my team and I continue to be praying for them, but speaking for myself and myself only, it's been a true blessing that I've been able to just be still enough, be still enough, you know, and to be transparent guys, the, what I do for work, I ain't never got to go outside. I'm a writer. I can work from home. I can work from anywhere. I choose to work, you know, to, to write. I can write anywhere. I can write at the bus stop, a metro bus. I can write in, in Starbucks, like most fancy people do. I can write at the McDonald's, to, to, to anywhere I go to, I can write, you know, uh, but, you know, but, and that's a choice for me to go outside. But now being told to, um, I have to stay inside, especially because of my illness, that I, I'm, I'm more prone maybe to even, con, you know, to contracting something, you know, an infection of uh, the virus or anything, that whatever, you know, whatever it may happen, common cold, anything. I'm quarantined literally in my space, you know, and it allowed me to literally sit back and just commune with God and commune with myself and just sit and digest a lot of things, guys, a lot of things. I can tell you one thing for sure. This quarantine has heightened my prayer life. It's heightened my, my time to spend with God. Uh, it's, it's heightened my time to read the word of God. You know, you know, spending time with God, I mean, the word of God are two different things. Spending time with God is me actually having a conversation with him. You know, me reading the word is reading that blueprint that he laid for me. Those are two different things. I can read the blueprint anytime, but actually sit and spend time and, and have a conversation with God like I'm having with you. Not just always in that 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 deep and and uh, and uh, theologic type prayer. You know, it, it's just be that, that's, you know, hey, God, you know, it's me again. You know, I'm just calling to say what's up. You know, sometimes it's literally just that simple. Just me telling God, hi, I'm, thank you, and I'll talk to you later. And this time has solidified that for me, right now for me. You know, um, but yeah, guys, so I'm I'm truly using the time for my benefit, for my good. I'm using it to reflect on things. I'm using it to, to, to brainstorm new ideas and to plan things out. You know, I... I, I I know that after this year, it's going to be some great things that come for me. Um, and I pray for you guys as well who are dealing with this quarantine in-house thing. You know, I pray that you guys have had time to sit and reflect on things and to um, mental, uh, uh, ment uh, what's it? Um, to, to, to uh, mentalize a lot of things. I think that's the word. If not, we're going to go with it. I'm, I'm, I'm in an emotional place right now. Forgive me, but I'm going to finish this video out real soon. But I really pray that you guys have had time to just sit and reflect, sit and just thank God for for the life that you had and and are continue and will continue to have, even after this this um, pandemic is over. I, 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 my prayer is that you guys have just just been able to just sit and just you know say God, you know what, pour into me, guys, fill me up, guys, and 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 where I lack, God, you feel, God, you know where I'm lacking, God, just fill those spaces, God, rest in me, you know. You, and and forgive me if if you aren't the religious type or or the prayer type or 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 whatever it may be if you don't believe in God forgive me this video may not be for you but for those who 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 this who those who are here for that I'm standing with you guys I'm I'm praying with you I'm believing in what God is about to do with you you know um and 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 let your life be a testimony for those who are dealing with something and that you may can and reach out and touch and tap into, 
You know, I know for a fact, I'm like I said in one of my earlier videos, I'm a, a living, walking testimony. Even with my walker, which is behind me, I'm a living, walking testimony. Emphasize on the word walking. I'm walking with my testimony. And I can guarantee you that it will touch a lot of people. And it has already done so. It's already done so. Um, yeah, guys, but just take this time. Uh, let's finish out this quarantine strong and let's come back even stronger. You know, we know it's a lot of chaos going on around us. We have a, a lot of things going on politically and climate change and all these things happening around us. I know we're dealing with the, the seasons. The seasons are changing right before our eyes. And that's OK. It's OK. You know, if, if you're able to go outside, go out, you know, get five, 10 minutes outside. Go for a nice walk. Walk your dog if you got it. Let your cat out. Watch the cat when it come back. You know, um, walk to another block. Just, just get some fresh air. You know, if you if you are able to go outside and enjoy the weather, if you, if you're able to, but at the same time practicing social distancing, guys, practicing um, self hygiene, you know, hand sanitizing, washing your hands, um, face masks if you have them. If you don't, there are links on YouTube where you can learn to make homemade face masks out of cloth and rubber bands and other things, or or bandanas or scarves or whatever. Um, guys, but yeah, just. Just be careful out there. If you if you choose to go outside to get fresh air, or go to, if you have to go to the store, whatever it may be, just be careful. Be safe. Always be take precaution in whatever you're doing, guys. And if you are wearing those um, rubber nylon gloves, guys, remember everything you touch with those gloves is passing on something else. So if you touch one thing, don't think because you wore those gloves touching one thing that you aren't passing on with the other thing, right? It's it's still transposing. So be careful with that as well, guys. And do not, please, guys, do not dispose your gloves on the ground when you're done with them. That is not effective. That is actually defective. That's the opposite of what you want to do. You want to, you want to dispose of those things properly, guys, so that we we actually stop the spread. Forgive me, some my leg itch a little bit. I'm a little ashy, so I'm a little itch a little bit. Um, but yeah, guys, let's just take precaution. Let's be careful. Let's look out for our neighbors. Let's check on our elderly, make sure that, that they are doing okay. Guys, if you have family members in the senior citizen homes, guys, call and check on them to make sure that they are doing well as well, guys. Let's beat this thing. Let's come out on top. We have already been granted the victory through the blood of Jesus. Um, we've already been given the um, authority over these things, so let's continue to speak to it. Let's let's um let's let's speak it away. Let's um stand in agreement. You know, the word of God says what two, three or more gathered um in his name. He shall be in the midst. Um, it also says whatever we ask in his name, in, in the name of Jesus Christ, um, it'll be given. Guys, so let, let's continue to pray. Let's come together in, in, in unison, as in unity. And let's do our parts, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Let's continue to do what we have to do to beat this thing, guys. And that's pretty much all I got for this video today. Um, I know I dropped a lot of videos this week, but I'm in quarantine. Right, what better, what better way to, to keep my mind going than to keep dropping content, some great content. Um, and I'm not doing this just for the content, just for, for the likes, for the shares. I'm doing this because I wanna get this story. I wanna get my story out there, guys. You guys have already seen some of it so far. And I promise you, I'll continue to dive into it as these videos go on. Um, but yeah, this vi these videos may not be for the faint of heart as we go on. And forgive me for those there, but I have to get the story out. I have to share my testimony. Um, I was told in one of our prayers, God came to me after I prayed one night. He's told me specifically to use my platform, to use and use my voice while doing so. So that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been trying to do. Um, so bear with me with these. I know these videos may not be uh, production type quality, but I'm giving it to you best I can for the time being. Um, when the time comes, I will have all the the, the gizmos and gadgets, but until then, it's still going to be raw and cut. Even then, when we get those gadgets and gadgets, gadgets and gadgets, gadgets, and when we get all that fancy stuff, right? It's still going to be raw, uncut, and unedited to, to the best of my ability to keep it unedited. Some stuff may have to get cut out, you know, like bloopers and stuff. But um, even then, I might still leave them in. I like bloopers; they're funny to me. Uh -huh. But yeah, so guys, again, practice those things. Let's stay safe. Let's stay vigilant. Let's stay alert. And most of all, let's be blessed. This is your boy, your host. You guessed it. This guy, Marcus T. I'm out. Peace.